Chapter 7, Lakay Islands North Samendal Amerk When I left Kino in the inn, his temperature had gone down. Sweat covered his body as though his fever had finally broken. I wiped the sweat off his body, although I could not change his clothes. This progress made me more confident about the next steps. I hope that when I return, I will find him better. For now, there is a task at hand that I need to focus on. How much for the boat? I asked. A hundred and twenty gold coins, the man answered. I am not asking to buy the boat. I just need a ride to Lakay Islands, I said. The man looked sullen. No one wants to leave the islands. I have to charge you for the cost of going and leaving that place. Otherwise, I would have to bear the loss. The man offered a hard bargain. How soon can you assemble the crew? I asked. Give me until dusk, and I will have the boat ready for you, sir, he said. All right. Prices had gone up more than double as the economy weakened under Emperor McQuinn Storm Aaron's rule. He was a ruthless ruler, changing so many regulations and implementing so many life-threatening policies. It was a good thing I was not in power to argue. After I handed half of the coins for payment, the man left without another word. I returned to the inn where I brought Kino. The barmaid glanced at me as I walked in. The tables in the dining area were filled with people, but nobody paid me any mind, for who would dare look twice at a beaten man with white hair and dressed like the rest of them? The stairs creaked not because of my weight but because it needed repair. I opened the door, and there was Kino, unmoving under the sheets. Boy, I said upon reaching him. Wake up. His eyes fluttered open but closed again. I sighed before going down to get water and shrubs for the fever. It was too much to hope that he would be healed when I returned. Kino was still burning up, so I had to force the water and the diced shrubs inside his mouth to help lower his temperature. I used the damp cloth the barmaid gave me to clean the boy, to remove the stench of sweat all over his body. The boy's face was flushed, and he kept moving in discomfort. Be still, my boy, I said, hoping it would be enough. Not surprisingly, Kino exceeded even though he was barely conscious. I removed his clothing and tended to the wound on his left leg. The surrounding flesh was just as hot, and an infection could have developed. The injury itself was already a tint darker than brown. This would heal in no time, I told myself, hoping that I was right. When I was done, I opened the window and peered at the sky. It had gone dark. By my estimation, the boatman would have been ready. I gathered Kino in my arms and took my pack. It is time for this to be over. The road to the port was a pleasant ten-minute walk, and by the time I reached the wharf, the boat was ready. The man who was to be the captain of our journey was already providing instructions to the oarsman. He lowered the plank to allow me to cross over when he saw me. The weather's fine, sir, he said. Our journey would be over two days. Three the most, if the waves grow slightly angrier. Do you have enough food for all of us? I asked. Yes, sir. Everything you requested was gathered in the short hour that you acquired my services, the captain assured. Very well, I said. And the healer? At that, the boatman shook his head. Sadly, there was no one to be found, he said. Everyone has been called to the Canellan Palace to journey. Those who rejected the invitation were publicly executed and their families branded as traitors. Kino stirred in my arms. I wanted to put him down on the bunk. The boy had gotten heavy, and I was an old man. I knew my limits. It's all right, I said. Take us where we can sleep for the night. The boatman turned and walked ahead of me. He had taken my pack and swung it over his left shoulder. There is only one room, and the roof is low. But this would keep your boy protected from the cold of the night. He swung a slightly ajar door open at the end of the deck, adjacent to the captain's room. I peered in and was met by the musky whiff of wood drenched in seawater. The man wasn't kidding when he said the roof was low. There was also very little space. I only took a step, and the edge of the bed was already touching my knees. I put Kino down and sat on the edge of the bed. The boatman left the door ajar. 
After a few minutes, he peered inside, his face a mask of determination. We will leave in five minutes, he said. Without waiting for my response, he vanished just as quickly. From outside, I heard him shouting instructions to the men. The boat lurched as the wave swept us gently toward the middle of the sea. I had more reasons for wanting to reach Lake Island sooner. It was where I was supposed to wait for Micromania. <laughs> <laughs>